I'm James Greger, Professor of Medicine and Epidemiology and Biostatistics at Western University in London, Ontario, Canada. I'm also the Site Chief of the Inflammatory Bowel Disease Clinic here at London Health Sciences Centre. Today, I'd like to invite you to look at a paper that examines the willingness to pay and patient preferences for treatment in inflammatory bowel disease. I think you will find the paper interesting and the results thought-provoking. Numerous options are currently available to treat patients with inflammatory bowel disease. But with all treatments, the options come with varying degrees of potential benefits, risks, and side effects. Research suggests that physicians and patients often place differing value on these outcomes, but little research exists, particularly in Canada, on the actual magnitude of these values. We conducted a preference-based study to quantify and rank what patients value using a willingness to pay methodology. I'm often asked, what is willingness to pay? Technically, it is a type of discrete choice conjoint analysis that can be used to assess the value that patients associate with certain product attributes in relation to other product attributes. When associated with a dollar value for the attributes, this becomes a willingness to pay study. Essentially, it tries to measure what product attributes are perceived by patients as having the highest value based on how patients would spend their money. The model presented paired medication scenarios to respondents with varying efficacy, safety, and administration parameters. In the willingness to pay analysis, 12 attributes were included and were classified into three meaningful categories. One, administration characteristics, such as pain on administration, dosing schedule, and mode of administration. Two, efficacy outcomes, comprising symptom relief, mucosal healing, speed of onset, and need for steroids. And three, safety risks, including injection reactions, time on market, number of patients exposed, chance of surgery or hospitalization in the following year, and infusion reactions. Here's an example of one of the theoretical choices patients were asked to make that varied administration characteristics and predicted benefits. The choice experiment, of course, included numerous consistency checks and algorithms to prevent fatigue while providing adequate sampling. Here are the results regarding relative preference weight estimates for the average respondent, reducing pain during administration, mucosal healing, and reducing the need for steroids for symptom relief were the highest ranking attributes. Conversely, infusion reactions and risk of hospitalization or surgery over the next year were the lowest ranking attributes. In multivariate analysis, patient socio-demographics did not affect the rank order of attributes, although small differences were observed between asymptomatic and symptomatic patients over the previous year. As a clinician that treats patients every day, I wasn't surprised to see that symptom control and even mucosal healing was very important for patients. What was most tantalizing from these results, however, is how much value patients place on lowering administration pain. These findings provide insight into understanding patient preferences, which may enhance informed patient-centered decisions and strategies in IBD management.